This is Doritos and Briars. Um, Speaking of, Bree, can you get the special thing for us? Well, I can only guess what this is. <laughs> oh, you, did you mix them together? Oh, Christ. <laughs> oh, it's, it's exactly what you think it is. Actually, I love how you said Doritos, considering it's actually Doritos. <laughs> is it Briars too? Just say yes. No, actually. Just say yes. Yes, yes, okay. it is. Um, okay, hold on, I'm going to try that. Oh, bit of God. Ice cream. <laughs> I surprisingly was not actually ice cream I was a little in the mood for see when I hear chips I think chocolate chips though hmm? mm. are you eating it with the chips though or are you separating the two you're supposed to have both together having them together is an abomination you're going to hell for it well I'm already going to hell anyways so <laughs> this is chips and ice cream um, oh god <laughs> it's that good huh <laughs> You know, when I was a kid and worse. I watched Ninja Turtles, I always wanted to try those pizza combinations. You know, I wanted to do that as, like, videos and whatnot. Is go, like, episode by episode, and whatever topping they'd have, I'd actually make that pizza. James Rolfe actually did it. Oh, that jerk! Yeah. He, genius, uh, genius. He tried it. One of them actually was okay. Uh, he said all the others were terrible, but what I want to say it was, like, marshmallow and pizza or something like that. Like, there was one that was actually all right, but... Yeah, the rest were apparently really nasty. Uh, so, okay. Uh, this is an episode where this... Uh, I'm good. Uh, oh. <laughs> oh, <fuck. laughs> oh my god, that's awful! <laughs> that's one of the worst things I've ever had. <laughs> Those are two opposites that just do not go together. <laughs> That's, that's amazing, but what am I... I was going to take it away. Oh, no, I want the actual ice cream. <laughs> the ice cream I'll eat. I love how he leaves the chips still in there. Well, I mean, where am I going to put I guess I'm going to put them in yours. So, pretty much what it is is that this bear has these two... Uh, these two little creatures on his head that just say chips and ice cream. And he does a little puppet show with them. And Bimo loves it. All these little kids love it. And uh, so they invite him over to dinner, and he, over the moonlight, transfers the little creatures onto Jake's head. Jake's just mildly annoyed. He's actually not horrified yet. You know, he's just kind of, kind of an, a nuisance. But obviously he hasn't had him on his head as long as this other guy has. And uh, Bimo tries to translate and figure it out, but the bear finds he has Stockholm Syndrome to these things and tries to... Um, you know, to tries to go back, and he tries to get him back on his head, but Bimo figures out the language, um, and can apparently speak it very well, <laughs> and goes to, uh, free them, the bear comes, he wants him back on there, but Bimo captures them, and then lets them go free, and the bear is happy that they're free, and then they kind of reenact the opening, right? Because doesn't mm -hmm. a bird fly by, yep. and they kiss him, and stuff like that, so, uh, and they seem to be happy. Um... So, they, you know, it's so funny because, like, just before this, we were talking about, like, Andy Kaufman and, like, mm -hmm. weird stand-ups and how much of it is just kind of, like, almost instinctual, silly or whatever, just what you're not expecting and stuff. And here's this episode. It starts off with these two things just saying chips and ice cream <laughs> and the kids laughing and going nuts and BMO loves and everything. And we even brought up Andy Kaufman man-eating ice cream. Like, yep. we brought that up. I'm like, this is really quite a coincidence. Um... So, yeah, it's, uh, what the hell do I say about it? Just, <laughs> just an ice cream. That's all I can say about it. Um, I mean, it's, it's, it's okay. I, I think the idea of him, like, wanting to get away and then finding he can't live without him, that was kind of funny. Yeah. Uh, and interesting. Um. Especially the sock versions. Yeah. The, uh, the funny thing is when they sang Chips and Ice Cream, uh, I was kind of compared it to Einstein on the beach, which is usually not a good comparison. <laughs> but uh, but in this case, like it actually almost kind of sounded nice. You know, it was kind of like this. It's this weird gibberish, and some of it's kind of spoken, some of it's sung, but together it almost kind of worked. It kind of actually sounded very nice uh, listening to it. Um, but it's also kind of annoying too because they're just saying those two words over and over. Um, and I like the way those two could 
talk and you could tell that they were saying something even though it was just technically chips and ice cream but they were actually <laughs> communicating um so i mean that was okay <laughs> you know it was fine how about you well okay so chips and ice cream are the duo garfunkel and oats uh yeah I don't know which what? one it is uh what, what, why why do i know uh, that? I know katie that i can never say her last name uh she is sadie from steven universe from the Oh, yes, okay. Marie, get all excited. So second episode <laughs> in a row, it's a Steven Universe. Uh, well, aren't like half the people from like Steven Universe and this and like Gravity Falls, like they're all just connected in one way or another. Well, I know that Gravity Falls and Rick and Morty are really close. Oh, that's interesting. Like, uh, they're like, the creators are like best friends. <laughs> I found that out, which I think is they're pretty like cool. They're like almost polar opposite shows, too. <laughs> um... Okay, kind of get off on something, because we watch stupid YouTube stuff all the time. But in the first episode of Rick and Morty, um, since I never saw Gravity Falls, there's a part where one of the guys has a notebook, a coffee cup, and uh, a pencil mm. that gets dropped into a portal, mm -hmm. I guess. And then in Rick and Morty, <laughs> Rick shoots a whole bunch of portals open, and as he's jumping through, all of a sudden, a, a mug, a pen, and a notebook quickly pop out of it. Oh, like in one of the Gravity Falls episodes they do that? They or? lose it through some portal or whatever, I guess. Oh! I God, I don't even know. Gravity Falls is one of those kind of like Adventure Time and Steven Universe. Like there's yeah. all these little clues and hints going on throughout the whole thing and stuff. So that's that's really funny. Oh. So yeah. So I know there's a connection there. With Adventure Time, I don't think there's as much of a connection. I just know that like uh, Katie uh, Chips, uh, I know her actually from first from Malcolm in the Middle. Oh, is she she in... was on an episode, just one episode, uh, the one where they were doing the prom. Like, that's all I remember her from. <laughs> and then, yeah, from Sadie from, uh, well, I was going to say Gravity Falls. Uh, Steven Universe. The <laughs> Steven Universe. So, that, I think, is pretty cool. There's another Steven Universe connection. Um, but, uh, for me, the episode's kind of like, be careful what you get rid of. You may not actually want to get rid of it. Mm. You know? In the, someone may annoy you or something may bother you and then you get rid of it and all of a sudden it's like, oh crap, what did I do? Mm. You know, that's kind of more or less what I saw from this, but then again, I think if it's annoying, you should get rid of it. I will say this, uh, the oh, fact crap, that... you're going to get rid of me, aren't you? <laughs> I, trust me, up here, you've been gone a long time. Damn it! Um, but uh, <laughs> in terms of uh, what makes it a little bit more interesting, more I think about it, you know, now that you brought that up, is that if they literally just said chips and ice cream the same way... The whole time, then you'd be like, well, this is like, you know, Stockholm, or he's just nuts, it drove him nuts, or whatever. But because you know they're communicating, and there's different inflections and stuff, there is a little bit more of an opportunity for him to make a connection with them, mm -hmm. even though he has no idea what they're saying. Uh, so, because there is definite inflections, and they cry, and they get happy, and they sing, yeah. and stuff like that. So there's definitely personalities there, you just don't know how they're you know what they're saying yeah so i think that at least allows a little bit more of a reason why there could be a connection you know why he wouldn't want to get away from him uh necessarily or he didn't think that uh he would also going back to family like you said you've been with him for so long love of them or hate them they're still part of you in a sense <laughs> well literally in this yeah. case <laughs> yeah. uh I thought it was interesting, but then again, if I had something saying chips and ice cream over and over in my freaking head, I'd probably, <laughs> I'd want to get rid I'd probably of take scissors like... or something. And... No, I'd, I'd probably want to do what BMO's doing. I would try to figure out how to communicate. That'd be the first. Because clearly they have inflections and, you know, kind of personalities and stuff. That would be the first thing. I'm like, okay, I gotta, gotta be able to communicate with these things somehow. Uh, I'd be doing what BMO was doing. Um, and then cut them off and say never come back. Um, Taco. <laughs> burrito. Taco. Burrito? Taco. Taco. Burrito. Burrito. Taco. Taco, 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 taco. Burrito. I'm done. <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>